Hi, I've never made a YouTube video before and I actually just recorded all of this on my laptop but the sound was too low so I'm going to try this again. So I wanted to post here because I've been having these dreams or visions that I didn't really know what to do with them and I think that I'm meant to share these with more than just my family and friends. Let me give you just a bit of background. I became a Christ follower in 2011. I was baptized along with my sister, and we um, were going to this church that she invited me to. We grew up going to church. I went to church my whole life and didn't realize I didn't really know God. So I got baptized in 2011 with my sister, and I was really on fire for Jesus at that time. A couple years after that, so about four to six years ago from today, July 4th, 2018, I had this dream and I didn't really know what to do with it. In this dream, my sister and I were in a very large condo high rise, beautiful building, city I didn't recognize. My mom and her mother, my grandmother were in the room. We looked out this huge panoramic window and there were these very large fireballs four to five feet in diameter raining out of the sky. And my sister and I were standing in front of the couch where my mom was sitting, begging her to give her life to Christ because we knew the end of the world was upon us. We knew what we were seeing outside was essentially Armageddon. We were begging my mom to find Jesus. And so she did. And she said, okay, fine. And that in that instant, we died or we just went, like I knew the fire must have hit the building because we were suddenly transported into this beautiful garden. We just were in an instant in this room in this condo to boom, this beautiful garden. I saw people in my family that I knew. My parent, my dad was there. My mom was there. Her mom was not there because in this dream, my grandmother had been refusing to hear what we were saying. My now husband, who was my boyfriend at the time, was also in this garden. And I knew it was heaven. It was gorgeous. It was beautiful. It was beyond words. I didn't really know what to do with the dream. And at that time, my mom wasn't going to church. She was really resistant to the idea of going to church. She'd had bad experiences. My sister and I had been begging her. She didn't want to hear anything about church. So I tried to tell her a little bit about this dream, but I was too afraid to push her away, so I didn't want to say too much. Fast forward a couple years um, after that dream, I ended up moving across the country away from my, where my mom was living, but prior to that, I had been going to this church near where we both lived. We were neighbors, and I had been begging her to go. She didn't want to, didn't want to really want to hear anything about it. So I um, left it alone. I moved out here, and she had apparently been... She started going, and she was telling me once I moved here, oh, I'm going to this amazing church, blah, blah, blah. I asked her the name of the church, and it just so happened to be the church that I was going to. So anyway, small part of that story. She started going to church um, and, you know, gave her life to Christ, and I was just so thankful. Well, fast forward to 2018. In 2018, my parents had scheduled a vacation here to where I live to come see me for my birthday weekend. We started planning this trip in... January. I have already lived here, so I was ready to take the time off of work. Um, a couple years ago, I started reading this book, the, the Left Behind series. I know that it was written by a couple of pastors. It's a fictionalized account of what could happen during the tribulation. It took some liberties, likely, because I, we know in scripture that um, there's 144,000 Jews who will be marked with the seal of God that will be saved during the tribulation, but there are no guarantees, according to scripture, that any Christians or Gentiles or non-Jews, who scared me, there's fireworks going on outside, will be saved. So I started reading it again, just the beginning of 2018, because I wanted to finish up the series. So I told my mom about it, and she was all excited to read it with me. I lent her the Left Behind book on my Kindle library, but she started, you know, getting really sick and weak and. Well, he wasn't able to kind of lift the book up and or the Kindle. So ended, uh, the book ended up getting returned to my Kindle, and she never read it. She arrived here April 20th, two days before uh, the scheduled party we were going to have. 
she was really sick and we took her to the hospital on April 21st we didn't know just how bad she was she ended up passing away on May 20th so she passed away she died on Pentecost um, two weeks before she died starting to get the idea that she might not be getting out of the hospital she might not get better she just kept getting worse and worse I had another dream now remember the first and only dream I had similar to this was four to six years ago with the big fireballs that were about four to five feet in diameter raining out of the sky we were begging my mom to give her life to Christ so I had a dream two weeks before she died and in this dream I thought it was because I was reading the Left Behind series and I was reading the book Glorious Appearing so I thought in my dream at the time I was dreaming about the Glorious Appearing which is essentially when Jesus comes back with his armies after at the end of the tribulation just prior to the thousand year reign but I realize now that I believe my dream was actually about the rapture because in this dream we were again in another tall dark high rise but it was dark in the room and there was just a bunch of us in this room waiting around we were waiting for Jesus to come we didn't really want to do anything we were just kind of milling around standing there waiting and I knew in this dream it was only fellow Christians fellow believers Suddenly, this huge cloud appears in the room, and this tall man, in my dream, I knew that to be Jesus, appears, and we were clear, cheering and clapping and so excited, and the elation I felt in my spirit and the happiness I felt, I can't even describe it to you. And then I woke up. And then my mom passed away on May 20th of 2018. Well, after her funeral or before her funeral, we were planning her funeral, but after she died, I had t started talking about these two dreams. I had the one from six, four to six years ago, and the other one, two weeks before my mom died, I started telling my husband and my dad about them, just to kind of gauge, because I know when you tell people about stuff like this, they think that you're whacked out weird, and I didn't know what to do with these. I'd never had dreams like this. And... You know, I, I thought, okay, I didn't really think much of it, but I had a coworker tell me once at a job that I had recently, she came up the stairs, or we were coming up the elevator together. She didn't know my faith walk. She didn't know if I was Christian or anything. She just looked really stressed out, and I asked her what was wrong, and she said she had a dream about her father who had passed away, and he told her in the dream, Miha, get your house ready. Jesus is coming soon. I hadn't really thought about what she said for a while because that was probably eight months ago till I was telling my dad about this dream I had two weeks before my mom died and it started clicking. Wait a minute, maybe that dream was about the rapture. Well, fast forward to June. My husband was graduating uh, from residency and my dad was scheduled to come back out here. He hadn't been here since my mom died. And I had another dream prior to June 29th. By this point, I've been talking to both my dad and my husband about the end times. Ad nauseum, I'm probably annoying them about this stuff. And in this dream, my dad was in at this time. We were all outside. It was a normal day, a really sunny, beautiful day. We were around these bleachers. And suddenly, this bright, brilliant light pierces through the sky. It was brighter than the sun. It was so blinding, but I could barely look through, and I could see this man behind the brightness. And I knew it was Jesus. And I turned to my dad and my brothers. I said, I told you, I told you, I told you, I told you. So we start going up. And this time we went all the way up out of the earth. And I could turn around and I could see the earth, this beautiful globe. And I could see all these spirits rising up. And we had transformed in an instant. As soon as we broke through the atmosphere of the earth, we weren't in our physical bodies anymore. We were like these spiritual forms. I can't really describe it, but we weren't in these bodies. They don't really have our features like we do now. And then I turned to look behind me. I looked back. Suddenly, I started dropping back down to the earth. And I kept trying to jump up, and I couldn't go back. So I didn't really think anything of that. And then I woke up. So then I, you know, I started reading more of the word and trying to understand and seeing if other people have been having these visions and watching other people's channels and thinking, okay, I'm not the only one. And I started thinking about Sodom and Gomorrah, and I stumbled upon some other YouTubers channel and they were saying how in their excuse me in their uh, 
end times dream or vision that they had, you know, during the rapture, don't look back. And I thought of Sodom and Gomorrah and how Lot, when he was being saved, God told him, don't look back, but his wife looked back and she turned into a pillar of salt. So I think in my dream, because I looked back at the earth to see who was behind me, I went back to the earth to have to endure some portion, if not all, the tribulation. So that's probably an important detail to share, the fact that I fell back down to the earth. Okay, so I still didn't really know what to make of these dreams. Like I said, I'm not somebody that I would consider myself prophet. I'm not a prophet. I'm not saying that I am. But I don't understand why suddenly I'm having these dreams. I've been praying about them, asking God to kind of show me, you know, the meaning, reading his word, reading end time scriptures, etc. And then I had another dream. Two days ago? Three days ago? What days ago? It's not midnight yet, so maybe two days ago. My son was taking a nap, so I decided to take a nap. And as I was dozing off, I felt the sensation of the room like shaking like it was an earthquake. And suddenly I dozed off. And I want to read part of Joel, chapter 2, verse, starting at verse 1. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy hill. Let all who live in the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is close at hand, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness. Like dawn spreading across the mountains, a large and mighty army comes, such as never was in ancient times, nor ever will be in ages to come. So in this dream, I was flying, watching this earthquake and these cities, and I saw these clouds just pouring. It looked like somebody was pouring gray paint into the sky, and the clouds were literally pouring through the heavens and falling into the earth. It's thick gray gloom. It was like somebody was pouring a bucket of gray paint clouds. I also saw what looked like, I believe they were angels. They looked like a mixture of clouds and rocks. I saw one with really large wings. It was like stony falling out of the sky. I don't know if it was a fallen angel or heavenly angel, but I saw it. And I saw fire. It looked like it was splashing into the ground. So I don't know if the fire was bubbling up or coming down. I don't think it was raining down from heaven necessarily, maybe bubbling up from the earth because of the earthquakes. And then I woke up. Um, continuing on in Joel chapter 2, verse 3, before them fire devours, behind them a flame blazes. Um, and I had asked God a couple days before, you know, if he wants to share more visions with me, if he does happen to share with me something related to either the tribulation or the the earthquake and the sixth seal or something, that I do not be afraid while I'm witnessing this in my dream because I've been really terrified reading these scriptures about what's to come. It's scary. I don't want to be scared because if I'm getting these to help people and to spread this word and this message, I need to be strong enough to withstand it. So that was the most recent dream that I had. Like I said, I've never really had these dreams, but the second of these four dreams now I've had only started the second week of May, or the first week of May, really two weeks before my mom died. So Joel chapter 2 verse 28, he goes on to say, God says, and afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your old men will dream dreams, your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness, the moon to blood, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there will be deliverance, as the Lord has said, even among the survivors whom the Lord has called. I don't consider myself, like I said, to be a prophet. But there's a reason why I keep having these dreams. I don't know if that's because I'm digging into this stuff and trying to find the end times, if it's been put on my spirit. I feel the sense of urgency to get this message out. I've been sharing it with just a few family and friends because I know it's almost insane to share a message like this. It seems beyond belief and it's scary. And you know that once you put it out here, you can't get it back. And Yes, I have friends and family who know that I'm Christian in some capacity. They may not realize to the extent 
I don't consider myself an expert in any of this. In fact, the more that I read scripture and the word, the more I realize uh, I feel like such a baby believer, even though I got saved and found Christ for real in 2011. I just feel like I've wasted so much time focused on the wrong things and focused on things of this world and not him. And I wish now that I'd spent all this time I've been spending now in the word and reading the Bible and trying to understand what's to come that I've been doing this for years to get the word out. Imagine if I had been sharing this stuff for years. Um, I do think that we're living in the end times. I'm looking at what's happening in Jerusalem and in Israel. Just the other day and today they updated the article in the Washington Post that there are record temps globally across the world and there's a map and you see the map of the world and there's giant red across the entire globe in the northern and southern hemisphere. The southern hemisphere is supposed to be in winter but they're also seeing record hot temperatures. You see there's earthquakes erupting, the one in Hawaii is still erupting, there's wildfires, there's thousand year floods that are happening, hundred year floods. This is not coincidence. This is not just a scientific event. I really feel like the weathers, that, the patterns that we're seeing were prophesied about in the Old Testament and the New Testament. We really are seeing the end of times. If you look at what's happening around the globe and even the United States, um, politically, everything seems to be so dark and evil. And the United States allies are falling away with all of the tension. And um, I just feel like we are getting close to the end. People are putting their hopes in the wrong things. There's only one way to hope, and that's through Jesus Christ. I've seen a lot of people, especially after Justice Kennedy announced his retirement, saying, oh, I don't have any hope, I'm losing hope. Well, you're putting your hope in the wrong things. You're putting your hope in America, and in the government, and in man, and in the world. And we know that if you read the book of Revelations, which I implore you to read, the world is going to be destroyed. God, Jesus is the only way, the truth, the life, the only hope. I hope this message has reached someone in some capacity, um, just one person. I pray over this. I thank you, God, and thank you, Jesus, and thank the Holy Spirit for these dreams and these visions and for finally giving me the courage to share this. I've been terrified to put this out there because to the non-believer and to somebody who's not necessarily focusing on this, if they are a believer, this sounds completely insane. So thank you, God, foremost for giving me the courage to redo this video because this is the second time, the first time there was no sound, but no weapon formed against you shall prosper and we will get this message out. Thank you, Jesus, in Jesus' name. I pray for all of you. I pray for the salvation of those who don't know God. And I pray that we keep our eyes open and we keep looking up. We know redemption draws near. We know that Jesus is coming back. We know it's happening soon. We're running out of time. If not, we're out of time. We're on borrowed time. So get your house in order. Get your spirit in order. Get your affairs in order. Because if you know Jesus, you know he's coming back soon.